Hi, this is Kevin, and today we're going to go over the definition of software architecture. At work the other day, I overheard someone say, well, changing the location of their certificate changes the architecture of the system, and using a PowerShell script changes the architecture of the system. I'm like, what does that mean? What does software architecture mean, anyway? This is the definition I'm going to use. The software architecture of a system is the set of structures needed to reason about the system, which is comprised of software elements, the relations among them, and the properties of both. So a software system that has a set of structures, like this one as an example, has components, and we can determine what the nature of these components are, and what their responsibilities are, what the connections are, and the significance of the connections, and how the properties of each one relate to each other, these components allow us to determine what the nature of the system is, and why the components are separated as they are. This structure, at a very high level, is software architecture. Now this is just one set of structures. There are potentially more sets of structures, also called views. Why is software architecture important? Software architecture is used as a way to communicate with stakeholders because it shows a common abstraction that everyone can use to get a rough understanding of the system and how it's all supposed to work. Software architecture allows you to make early design decisions about a system. Since the architecture usually doesn't change without great cost, these early design decisions carry great weight in terms of the system's development and maintenance life cycle of the product. Finally, software architecture allows you to make transferable abstractions of a system. This allows you to take perhaps an existing structure or a model and copy it or transfer it to another one with similar requirements. The thing to note or realize is that every software has an architecture. Even Hello World has a very simple architecture. Also, there aren't really good or bad architectures. They're just ones that meet the needs and others that don't quite meet the needs. However, at the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves if the software is doing what it's supposed to do, what it's designed to do. Every software has an architecture of some sort. If it's not defined early on, then one will inevitably get defined for you, whether you like it or not. And the one that's defined might not meet your needs. It's probably similar to making a movie. You need a script of some sort before you shoot the movie. If you decide to film the movie without a script, then, I mean, you'll get a movie, but it might not be the one you want. What are software architectures composed of? Well, you'll need architectural patterns, reference models, and reference architectures to come up with a software architecture. I'll go through each one and try to pair it with an example. Suppose we want to make our own web server that serves up HTML pages. What are the patterns and elements that go into a software architecture for it? First, the architectural pattern. There are many established patterns out there. Model view controller, pipe and filter, layered pattern. Well, these are all patterns. These patterns aren't dreamt up by someone on the spot, but exist in practice and have been widely accepted as good, stable structures. A software architect collects each pattern, much like a Pokemon collector goes out and collects, analyzes and documents Pokemon. For example, in our sample web server, an architectural pattern might be the client-server pattern. Next are the reference models. These are objects important to the domain or the day-to-day -day use of the system. For example, in our web server example, a reference model might be a controller, view engine, HTTP request handler, and so on. Next, a reference architecture. A reference architecture combines both the architectural pattern and the reference model. So in this example for our web server, if you combine the client-server pattern with the reference model, you get a reference architecture for our web server. If you take a reference architecture and add additional implementation details, like how it is deployed and what the classes look like and so on, you'll eventually come up with a software architecture. It's kind of abstract, huh? Well, that's software architecture for you. I hope you liked this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I hope you had a good day and I'll see you in the next video.